All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. I, I can't hear any of you because you're all on mute right now. If you have questions, uh, please keep them till the end of the presentation, and I'd be happy to uh, answer them. If they're particularly long, then uh, we may have to take them offline, but you can feel free to email me after the presentation, and uh, you'll get a link to all of these, these presentation uh, materials. So today's webinar is Measuring Transparent Films with Bruker Optical Profilers. So you can see here, uh, oops, sorry, moving ahead of slide. I've got an outline for you. First, I'm going to introduce myself, and I'll talk about some of the logistics of the presentation. Then I'll review vertical scanning interferometry, uh, just in one or two slides to hopefully uh, get you guys up to speed. I think all of you may already be profiler users, so if you are, then uh, that'll be something that's not new to you. I'll uh, talk about how we extend VSI to measure films, and I'll talk about uh, film measurements. We, we run two different modalities, thick and thin films. I'll show some film results. I'll talk about capabilities and uh, limitations of the, the uh, film's measurements. Then I'll give a summary and uh, have a survey for you guys, so hopefully you can uh, give some feedback to get some, some uh, uh, future presentations that are more uh, useful and, and have maximum utility to you. So first, a quick introduction about us. So we're Bruker Tribology Stylus and Optical Metrology located in Tucson. We are uh, the manufacturer of uh, stylus and optical profilers, uh, as well as tribology instruments. We have tons of patents, uh, awards, uh, photonic circle of excellence awards. We uh, are a lean Six Sigma based manufacturer with a, a small but right sized operation and we can rapidly uh, ramp production if we need to uh, uh, generate a lot of profilers at once. This is me. I am uh, Adam Wise, PhD, uh, field applications slash uh, system specialist. My background is in optical instrumentation and uh, physical chemistry, so uh, microscopy measurements, uh, that sort of thing. I used to be in organic photovoltaic R&D. Uh, specifically, uh, thin polymer film measurements were very important to me, uh, knowing uh, thickness of active layers, thickness of, of coatings. Uh, that was something that was, was very critical in my work, so it's something I've thought about for quite some time now. So who will benefit from this presentation? So either you have an optical profiler and you want to extend into uh, measuring transparent insulating films from about 100 nanometers to 100 microns, you're thinking about uh, getting an optical profiler, uh, or you uh, are looking to extend the measurements you're already making into uh, not just thickness but surface finish, topography, coverage, holes in the films, uh, cover, uh, 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 how, you, how your, your, your coating quality or your uh, photoresist quality is working out. And if you are looking to make these measurements, you could buy an imaging ellipsometer, but that's another piece of capital equipment that's probably as expensive or more expensive than the profile you, you, profiler you already might have. So this uh, increases the flexibility of the, the tools that you already are, are, are owning or, or thinking about owning. So what will you be able to do after this presentation is actually over? Well, well what, I'm, what I'm hoping you'll be able to do. So one is set up and run film measurements. So if you have a profiler and you have the film uh, package, uh, after this, you'll be able to take a crack confidently at measuring some films. You'll understand how the, uh, the fundamental capabilities and uh, uh, work and what the limitations are of the film measurements using an optical profiler. And you'll be able to reasonably predict whether the, uh, the Vision 64, which is our control software for these instruments, uh, films package, if, if it's going to be a good match for your samples. So some of these samples, you know, you'll have a film and you'll say, why isn't my film working? Or you'll, you'll have a, a film and it's working beautifully. Now you'll know uh, whether that's going to happen or not, hopefully. So just a quick background, white light interferometry. So I can't take the time, unfortunately, to go through and, and give a long discussion of, of what, an, what an interferometer is and how an interferometer works. But I think hopefully you all know, more or less, it's an optical instrument for making highly accurate surface measurements, and it does that by comparing a reference arm to a signal arm. So you have some, some reference surface here. For us, it's a flat, usually silicon carbide mirror uh, located in the microscope objective. And you have a signal arm, which is looking at your sample. And the difference in those two path lengths gives you interferometric fringes. And those fringes are measuring the difference in path length. Uh, the thing is, with a white light profiler, whereas with a laser, uh, you might have a coherence length of, of many, many, many meters or kilometers or something like that, fringes everywhere. With a white light profiler, because you have this, this large bandwidth light source, 
you have many, many wavelengths overlapping. Only at one very unique point in space, whoops, only at one very unique point in space will all of these wavelengths overlap and combine to give you uh, interference. So you have a small envelope, which is determined by the, the source bandwidth, which is about two microns for us with these uh, white light sources. And only within a two micron uh, path length difference, we actually get interference. So the key value, the key, the key point here is that a white light interferometer gives you interference, but only at a very specific, unique point in space when the uh, reference arm is exactly equal to the signal arm. How do we make measurements with this? Well, we sweep the optics through the sample. And uh, let's see if you'll see a little animation here. And as your sample traverses the focal plane, you build up a series of, oops, build up a series of images. And those images are combined in the computer to, to build a 3D surface. So you get a surface map. How are those points determined? Well, as you sweep through the surface, each pixel in the camera will start to modulate. And the center of mass of the modulation envelope is, is what determines where the, uh, the pixel is actually assigned in height. So, so this one is going to be down here. This one's going to be here. This one's going to be here. This one's going to be here. And then by, by doing that over the entire detector array, we can get the full image built up and you get a 3D surface. So what happens if you have a film on your sample? You don't have just one reflecting surface anymore. You have at least a film air interface and a substrate film interface. So you're getting one reflection off this, one reflection off this. And uh, not only do you get uh, interference between your reference arm and your signal arm uh, beams, but you have potential interference between these two beams as well, then interfering with the reference arm beam as well, so you could have three beam interference. And at the very least, you're going to have a more complicated signal coming back. So how does the software actually handle this? So this is what you would see if you were a single pixel running through one of these measurements. We have to here kind of make a distinction between films that are optically thick and films that are optically thin. And that break is the coherence length of the light source that we're using. So for a thick film, it's a fairly easy direct measurement. If you're a camera pixel watching this, then you would see first a, a signal from the, uh, the top surface. So you'd see modulation here. Then you'd see modulation coming from the bottom surface. And because that film is thicker than the uh, coherence length, you can pretty easily segment these through. So this is, a, this is a direct measurement. It's pretty intuitive. However, if you have a thin film, then these two envelopes are going to overlap and interfere with each other. So we have to do an indirect kind of model-based measurement that uses a fitting algorithm. And I'll, I'll kind of walk you, how you, walk you through how you would do a typical measurement. So again, with thick films, uh, larger than two microns, modulation envelopes are easily separable. Thin films, the modulation envelopes overlap and interfere, and we have to use model-based fitting with uh, parameters that we'll, we'll get from you and with a system response that you can measure from a, a bare substrate. So both of these measurement strategies are handled by one add-on. So Introducing the Vision 64 Films package. So this is something that's available now. You may already have it if you bought it with the profiler that you uh, you currently own, or maybe uh, a profiler that you're thinking about getting. So this is uh, a software-only upgrade. You don't have to buy any new hardware. Um, we can we can uh, send it to you remotely. You don't have to have a field service engineer come out and work. And it's available for all Contour GT models, uh, as well as possibly uh, oh sorry NP Flex as well. And uh, if you bought an, long story short, if you bought an optical profiler in the last few years from us, this is something you can get. If you're buying an optical profiler from us now, this is something you can get right now. Uh, it adds a new measurement mode. So it uses the, the same GUI as you're used to, the same GUI as you've been trained on or, or thinking about getting trained on. And it just adds a new film measurement mode. So you pull this down, this is where you'd normally uh, choose your measurement mode. And it pops up a new GUI. So this allows a measurement of films between 100 nanometers and 100 microns, but we have to break this functionality down into two ranges because this is two different, two different modes, and uh, it will give you a suite of different options depending on which one you pick. So to go through how you actually do these measurements, this is how you do the thick film measurement. So this is what you would see in your screen. You'd see two sets of fringes, although you generally want to null these out before you actually do the measurement. What do you need to know before you do the, the measurement? How does this flow actually work? How does this flow actually work? Sorry. You need to know the group refractive index, and uh, that's about it. You have to set some environmental thresholds. This is the actual flow. 
So setup takes about a minute. Uh, you can you can start the profiler up and and actually setting up the measurement just takes about a minute. Subsequent measurements only take a few seconds. However long the uh, the VSI measurement that you programmed actually will take to run, maybe one second to three seconds. First, you need to know, like I said, the, the group refractive index, and I'll explain why you need to know that in a minute. Then you set up the measurement the same way you would doing a, a normal vertical scanning and refractive measurement. Then you define some uh, envelope thresholds that kind of set the signal to noise for both the, uh, the top surface on the film and the bottom buried interface. And then finally, once that's done, it's kind of one and done per sample type. You can just loop these measurements and, and take as many measurements as you'd like. Uh, uh, you can automate this to uh, sample a whole wafer or a number of devices, and it's uh, uh, good to go once, that, once that's dialed in. Why do you actually need to know the, the group refractive index? Uh, because an interferometer measures optical path uh, differences, not just differences in space. So your actual film thickness is one thing, but your actual optical thickness or your optical thickness is the physical thickness multiplied by the group refractive index. So light travels slower in, in transparent media, and uh, that ratio is uh, expressed by the refractive index. So it's going to be somewhere between you know one and one point seven or something or so for for normal materials. Uh, this can give you some, some interesting effects if you're looking through a thin film. You can get some funny kind of optical illusions where if you're looking at a hole uh, in a film, the hole in the film will actually seem much higher up than the substrate around it. So uh, if you, once you have that all dialed in, then you run a film measurement, that, that uh, effect will go away. But it can give you some interesting effects that are kind of surprising. Uh, the film will seem a lot deeper than it is. So here are the measurement parameters I was talking about. It's, it's identical to a, more or less identical to a standard VSI setup. You choose the back scan in length, which is the, the distance through which your optics will sweep. And you define things like how should single surface data be treated, e.g., uh, you have part of the substrate that's uncoded. Where should that, that data be assigned? The profiler doesn't know automatically, so you have to kind of tell it. Uh, take any pixels that, that only have one, one layer and assign them to the top surface or the bottom surface uh, as well. And then finally, there's this button which is determine envelope thresholds, which is used for the actual segmentation algorithm that, that, that picks apart top surface versus bottom surface. And uh, that will pop up a GUI that will interactively kind of let the user set signal noise thresholds. So basically, you'll, you'll use your sample, and you click a pixel here. You can kind of poke around and explore, and uh, you can interactively set the thresholds for the, uh, the top surface of the film, the substrate, and then uh, click OK. And then you're good to go, and you can measure uh, as many film uh, measurements of the same material as, you, as you'd like. This is once per sample or once per sample type. So that's, that's all there is to it. You, you do that, and then you're good to go. And I'll talk about some of the limitations of, uh, of these film measurements in, in a bit uh, further down. But to uh, discuss the other mode, thin film measurements. So this is a little more involved and a little less uh, uh, obvious how this process works because you won't see two sets of fringes on screen. Uh, that's the whole point, is that you can't, you, you can no longer uh, trivially segment the top surface and the bottom surface. So the setup takes a little bit longer, about five minutes. Uh, not too bad. Subsequent measurements take a few seconds. And uh, they require a reference sample, which is an uncoated substrate of the sort that you're using under the film uh, that you're looking at. And you use that to measure the system response. And, and why you'd want to do that, I'll explain in a few minutes. And this is the general flow. First, you're choosing measurement parameters the same as you are before. You're, you're defining how the measurement works. Uh, then you're building the model with the reference sample. So basically, this is kind of getting your system response, uh, and that's used for the modeling. This is once per set of optics per substrate. So you do this once uh, per measurement type that you're going to do. So if you're changing magnifications, you need a different model, uh, and that's just to reflect all of the, the influences of the, the different optical components in the system. Then you can calibrate against a known film. Uh, this is somewhat optional because the calibration factor rarely goes more than 5% from the nominal. So for maximum accuracy, you definitely want to calibrate against a known film. Um, and I'll explain in a minute how you actually can get that uh, uh, known sample. Um, generally, you're going to do it with a stylus profiler, or you can use an SEM an ellipsometer, anything like that. Uh, and then finally, or, or almost finally, you'll set the bounds for thickness uh, results. This is optional, but uh, because of the way the modeling works, you can get a kind of modular uh, uh, answer. So there's a, there's a periodic answer. So usually that 
the, the right answer will be the, the global minimum for, for that fitting process, but occasionally you may need to provide it some bounds to remove uh, physically unreasonable uh, answers from, the, from your, your possible results. And then finally, once that's, that's done, and this is, I talked quite a bit there, but this is in reality just a few minutes of clicking, or maybe a minute of clicking, you're good to do your measurements. And then once that's defined, you can do these measurements as much as you'd like, uh, one after the other. So how does this fitting actually work? Well, as I mentioned before, uh, now your reflection from the substrate and uh, the film are actually going to interfere. So you don't see two sets of envelopes anymore. You see two overlapping envelopes that are interfering with each other, giving uh, a more complex uh, modulation pattern. So in fre the frequency domain, uh, if you do an FFT, you can calculate, or sorry, you can compute the, uh, the amplitude and the phase of the reflected field. So you get uh, lobes in, a, uh, 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 in the, the frequency domain. And you can compare this to the expected results based on the, uh, the system response that you calculate or that you get you measure with uh, your reference sample. So you have a substrate, you measure the modulation of, the, of that substrate, and then you use that as the seed for, for doing this model. And you get a, a merit function uh, that, that will give you a, a possible results. So building the model takes about 30 seconds, uh, depending on you know, how your, your sample and your measurement is set up. We have pre-baked uh, materials already provided with uh, vision with this add-on. So the most common coatings, uh, silicon dioxide, uh, silica, alumina, uh, that kind of thing will be already defined in here. So you, you need the optical properties to do this measurement. Um, if you want to add your own material, if you're using something exotic or just some sort of glass or some sort of coating that's not uh, present already, um, a weirder, a less common photoresist, you can pull those values down, say from like refractiveindex.info or something, and uh, directly put those. This is just a database that we keep uh, in your, your vision program data directory. Uh, and you can, you can define as many of the materials as you'd like. So once that model is built, you can go on and, uh, and make, your next, uh, make, your, make your next move here. And that's to calibrate thickness. So it requires uh, a sample of the same material on the same substrate. And you need to just pick the same model that you just generated and then uh, calibrate. And what you'll get is a window where it will do the measurement, uh, provide you with a result, and then you'll enter a nominal value and you'll get a calibration value. Here you can see it's only about 4% off the nominal. So uh, this definitely maximizes accuracy, but it's not, it's not strictly necessary. You can, you can get away with a calibration value of unity, with a, a, get some pretty accurate results for, uh, natively. So once you generated the model, this is the GUI when you have uh, the, uh, the thin film mode enabled. You'll have uh, some, some setup options, and you'll also have your models displayed here. So only the models relevant to the optics that you have selected to the system that you have running right now will be shown, so you can't accidentally make a measurement with the wrong model. And if you click on this, you'll get uh, some model details. Once you actually do your measurement, then you'll have two different ways to interpret the data. One is you can enter a nominal value, uh, plus or minus a tolerance, or you can allow the, the merit function to uh, uh, just find the global minima and, and that will report kind of automatically. So this is if you're measuring uh, films where you know roughly what the thickness should be, but you're trying to uh, quantify the departure from your, your ideal value or your, your, your uh, defined value. And here is a, more of an exploratory kind of mode where you can let uh, the fitting algorithm make its, its choices. And this is what the merit function will actually look like when you set it up. You can see that here's the merit function. You're trying to find the minimum for this. And then this is the, the possible answers. So you can see there's this modular uh, or, or periodic uh, uh, result, but there's over, an overall minimum. Sometimes that minimum is, is unrealistic relative to your sample. So here you can see that this, this global minimum is up by 1.5 microns, whereas a more reasonable one for this is probably a little closer to like 400 nanometers. So what you can do is you can bound this uh, to, to throw away the, the less physically relevant uh, uh, results. And uh, finally, this is how you would set the nominal value. So it's just a one click and then uh, nominal value and tolerance. So now I've, I've talked quite a bit about how to actually set those measurements up. I was going to show a few results. And uh, I'm going to try to keep the, my PowerPoint part of this to about half an hour. Uh, then I'm more than happy to answer any questions that are popping up. I'm I, uh, not keeping a great eye on just to see if any of your hands are raised uh, here. And I don't see any uh, questions typed in yet. So I'll have to, have to take a look at that in a few minutes. But oops. Oh, 
I'm going to show a typical result for a, a flat fin film and then a typical result for a more common or a result for a more complicated sample so you can see some of the capabilities. So this is normally what you'll see. It's not uh, terribly complicated, but you'll get uh, a result and you'll get some thickness statistics where it'll show you an average, um, maximum, minimum range in uh, RMS for roughness, or sorry, for, for film thickness. Uh, if the film is thick enough and high quality enough, uh, smooth enough, you can also uh, pick out with the thin film uh, both the top and bottom surface topography, so you can get roughness uh, uh, surface metrics for, for both the top and the bottom surface of the thin film. That can be a little bit tricky if the film is thinner, but uh, again, it's sample and material dependent. But this is going to be your typical uh, typical result. So basically, this is a nice flat, thin, uniform uh, alumina film on silicon. Oops. And then this is a much more complicated film. This is a, a silicate mineral on silicon. And uh, you can see there are a ton of interference colors, uh, lots of patches in the film, lots of uh, holes and pinholes and bubbles. This is a stylus profiler map. So this is independent of the optical properties. Uh, this is done on a DECTAC XT. And you can see that there's a nice fine resolution. Uh, pull in the film. This is uh, uh, immune to the, the changes in the optical properties over over uh, these sorry different uh, different regions. It's simply made by by contacting a needle onto the surface and dragging this across to measure the topography. So this is our, our reference, and we want to see how close the uh, the thin film package will get this uh, sample to the uh, the reference here. So the downside of this, even though it's it's very nice and has great resolution, is that this measurement probably took all night to make because this is done one scan line at a time. This is an in mechanical contact, so one, one needle dragging across the surface here. We can see that this uh, film measurement, this is done in a thin films mode on a contour GTI, uh, has, has quite nice agreement with the, uh, the, uh, the stylus profile measurement. The, the difference is that this took you know, probably all, all evening, maybe all weekend to make, and this took uh, probably about two seconds after setup. So you get uh, quantitative and, and qualitative agreement between the two, which is, which is quite nice. And then uh, finally, some best practices. So if this is something that you're using, here are the, the tips to kind of consider as far as getting maximum data quality out. The first is you can ensure the system, you need to ensure the system is properly set up. Uh, this is pretty sensitive to vibration. And the reason for that is it's uh, going to interpret vibration as additional modulation. So considering you're trying to, you're trying to tease out the smallest changes in the modulation envelope, uh, any any additional uh, vibration that you have, anything that's coupled into the floor, or any air flowing over your sample, will kind of create uh, uh, some artifactual measurements, or it'll, it'll mess up your your thin films. Just like it'll it'll add noise to your your normal VSI or PSI measurements, but it's it's even more sensitive. Um, not insanely sensitive, of course. I mean, it's it's doable in a, a normal room, um, just on a on a float table. But it's something to keep in mind is that is that uh, a vibration can can negatively influence this definitely. Uh, it's also good to use the same scanner position uh, for the sample calibration and reference just to avoid any, any contribution from uh, nonlinearity. Uh, carefully null the fringes, so just to make sure you're not getting any print through. Um, use white light and a lower magnification if possible. And I'll talk about that in a second. The uh, thick films are a lot more sensitive to magnification for reasons I'll explain in, in a few minutes. Uh, thin film less so, but the lower magnification uh, is, is a, a much more robust system for this, these thin film measurements. And then finally, uh, for thin films, it's important to at least have a, an idea of where your, your, your film thickness is. I mean, first of all, you need to know whether it's on the thin or the thick side of this, of this measurement modality. But beyond that, you, you'll need to um, be able to ground that, that measurement in reality as far as the actual uh, thickness results that you get, just in case you need to throw away a, a physically non-reasonable uh, value from the thin film's merit function. And finally, using the, the same intensity uh, measurement as the model is, is important as well. So a quick, a quick run through the limitations. It is not uh, uh, amenable to rough samples. So you need to have something that's PSI smooth, which is to say uh, an RMS surface roughness, maybe less than 30 nanometers. Uh, it's not super sensitive, but we need to keep correspondence between the model and the surface. And to do that, it, it should be very reflective. So it needs to be, it needs to be a smooth sample. You need to know the optical properties. So you have to know the dielectric function, and it must be insulating. So we have uh, 
most of the materials that you'll probably want to use built in already, but you can you can define those yourself. But you, you need to know optically what your material is doing. Uh, there's also a thickness limit. It needs to be your film films need to be roughly thicker than 100 nanometers, uh, and you may need to know the approximate thickness. You do need a reference. This is probably not that difficult because it's the, the same material you're using uh, in general, just a substrate, a, a bare substrate. And chances are, if you're making films, you have probably have some extra substrates lying around, and ideally of the same thickness. And uh, last for this, the optical properties need to be uniform across the uh, sample. We're assuming one set of optical properties across. Uh, if you need to measure a sample that has highly variable optical properties, you're probably going to have to use an oximeter. But for a uniform film, uh, an optically uniform film, then this should be perfectly fine. And uh, thick film limitations. Number one is magnification. Generally, you have to work below 20x. Although this is material and thickness dependent, the thicker the film, the lower the magnification you'll you'll be uh, uh, you'll need to use. And this is because at higher magnifications, you'll have uh, dispersion and angle of incidence uh, taking over and 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 making the uh, the reflection from the, the bottom surface uh, have lower and lower modulation contrast. And that's because your material is dispersive; it has different, slightly different refractive indices at, at different wavelengths. So it it create it, it breaks the correspondence between the reference reference arm and the signal arm for the bottom reflection, and slightly tweaks the phase of each wavelength relative to, to your reference reflection. Uh, the thickness limitation is 2 microns to 150 microns, uh, again, magnification dependent. You need to know the optical properties, only the group refractive index. You can also easily calculate this, or sorry, you, should, you can easily measure this if you have a step of the film. You can iteratively tweak the measurement a little bit until you get uh, the right film thickness. So if you can measure it on a stylus profiler or an electron microscope, or an ellipsometer, you can use that as a standard. Uh, run the measurement and just just divide through by uh, your apparent thickness versus the, the thickness that you've measured independently, and that'll give you the group refractive index. So it's not a complex process. It's not a whole table of constants. It's just one number that you can get experimentally in a few minutes. And finally, likewise, you need uniform optical properties across the sample. So the refractive index has to be uniform over the area that you're measuring because we don't have a way to independently per pixel uh, fit that. So finally, conclusions. The thin films package adds uh, quite a bit of capability and flexibility to these optical profilers. So it's it's doing the work of of uh, or doing a, a lot of the work of another piece of capital equipment that you may not be able to purchase. Um, although it would be great to have, but it's uh, it's essentially doing the work of two instruments, and it's doing it using the same interface that you've been trained on. So. If you have one tool that's doing two jobs, you don't have to do two sets of training, two sets of safety. Uh, it's it's a, a uniform interface. And finally, it's it's actually quite accurate. Uh, it, within uh, usually less than 1% for films over one, 100 nanometers. Uh, and it will um, give you quite a bit more information about the, the sort of samples that you're looking at, especially if you're using looking at coatings, uh, looking at photoresist layers. Um, Transparent MEMS, that sort of thing. So I think that's been about a little, a little bit more than half an hour. There we go. So I would like to open the floor for some questions, and also um, I would encourage you to to do the survey that's going to come in after this uh, webinar is over. So that's going to help us uh, tune future presentations and future future web content. To be uh, hopefully more useful for you, so so it'll be uh, uh, something that'll help improve the experience for you later on. So I'd love if you uh, took that that uh, that presentation. Sorry, took that, that survey afterwards. And uh, I'm going to open my uh, view and see if I can see some questions now. Okay, so I see quite a few questions here. I'm going to see if I can answer these in the order that they received. So I'm getting a question where it says, this looks like a static measurement. Can this be used on a moving web application? So I guess it depends on how fast 
oops, sorry, some questions are coming in. Depends on how fast the the uh, uh, your 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 uh, oh okay five feet per minute. Yeah, I don't see any reason why that that shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, the, the the actual speed of the measurement is on the order of a second. So as long as your surface isn't moving drastically during that that measurement, if if you know if it's vibrating like a drum head, that's going to be a problem. But if it's moving slowly, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, question: Can we measure pattern thin films? Uh, generally, it depends on how thick the film is. Uh, the th thicker films will be quite easier. Oh, sorry, these are coming in quite quite quick. quick. Uh, you can certainly measure pattern films, uh, pattern thin films. Um, but as I mentioned, the, the the thicker they are relative, you know, maybe above 100 nanometers, uh, 500 nanometers shouldn't be a problem, um, and that should certainly be doable. Uh, and you'll be able to measure them. I haven't I haven't personally had had too much trouble pushing the, the thin film measurements up in magnification. Um, as I mentioned before, thick film is a lot more sensitive to magnification, but uh, uh, I don't believe there there's as strong of a uh, uh, an effect with the thin film measurements, at least I haven't run into that. All right, so question. Which parameters can be used to measure and compare quantitatively the roughness of different surfaces? Uh, so you'll get you'll get the basic stats out of out of all of these, but but uh, RMS surface roughness, like the RQ, average surface roughness RA. Uh, there's a whole analysis. There, there's that's, that's quite a quite a broad question, but I mean, uh, if you already have an instrument, there's some discussion of this in the help, um, or you can check out Don Cohen's excellent uh, Michigan metrology page, which discusses a lot of this in, in depth and has some some excellent resources, and I'll I'll link to that. For thin film mode, well, you need a, a set of full uh, um, refractive index uh, N and K values for the white light spectrum wavelengths used. Um, I believe you just need a small subset of them, and it, it fits to there. I will double check that for you and uh, get back to you. But um, I see N and K uh, because you can only use uh, insulating films for this. I'm hoping that K is going to be zero for for all of your all of your wavelengths. Uh, so this package also enables measurements of surface roughness of thin transparent films. Uh, yes, it definitely does. Uh, that is not a problem. Do you expect any issues measuring a freestanding film uh, so air is the substrate? Yeah, uh, I would be concerned that your film is going to be uh, drumming, and that's going to be a problem because you're going to basically maximize the vibration that you get. Um, even a fairly thick freestanding film is is going to be vibrating like crazy, uh, and it will uh, potentially preclude you from doing thin film measurements. Um, although, if you had a thick film and it wasn't it wasn't vibrating quite uh, quite as much. You, so if it were you know 100 microns thick, uh, that might be doable. Um, and your so your 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 lower surface below the the second interface were for, were far enough away that you could you could easily bound the measurement to to only sweep the optics through the film. That might be might be quite doable. Um, all right. So someone said they missed part of the webinar, and it will be recorded, so you should be able to watch this again later. Uh, if using thick film, let's say eight microns, can I see the topography of the bottom of the film? Uh, yes, you should have no problem getting the the lower surface with thick film. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem at all. You'll get two independent surfaces that you can then process as you as you choose. Uh, question. Okay, this is a good question. So, is the stitching function available in, in film mode now? And when I say the magnification is 20x, uh, do I mean the magnification of the objective only, or both the objective and the FOV? Uh, I mean the objective, uh, principally the objective, uh, because the objective defines the numerical aperture, which is which is the what's what's limiting that is is the usually the um, sorry generally the uh, uh, the angle of incidence, which is defined by the numerical aperture, which is part of the objective. So. The objective is is generally what limits it. So uh, less than 20x for the objective. So you could have a 10 by 2, 10 objective, 2 FOV, and I believe that would work uh, fine. Although again, it it really does depend on the the, the specific of your sample. And uh, as far as stitching function in the film mode, yes, you can you can uh, you can do stitching in film film mode. I've, I've I've put out some an application note on that, I believe. And um, if you contact me uh, by email, uh, I can I can send that to you. 
can you use this for in situ thickness monitoring, monitoring during deposition? Uh, you certainly could in theory, um, but it's difficult unless you can either bring the profiler into your uh, evaporator or whatever you're doing the deposition in, or if you can, you can have a very small chamber that you're doing the, the, uh, the, the deposition, you could do that in real time. Um, the problem is that these instruments are built to work uh, uh, in the ambient environment. So I, uh, unless you can look through a glass wall into a chamber, it could be difficult to actually see into your deposition. Uh, question where is RMS a good quantitative value to compare the surface roughnesses of different films? It's certainly a good start, um, but there are, there are volumes written about uh, film metrics. So again, uh, I would recommend uh, looking further into, uh, I definitely recommend Don Cohen's website. So there are, there are tons and tons and tons of metrics for, for measuring different properties of surfaces, depending on what you care about, what's relevant to your, your needs and, and your, your application. So is, is RMS a good, a good quantitative value? Yeah, definitely, it's a good place to start. But does it tell the whole story of the surface? No, definitely not. So some of these questions I'm, I'm skipping over because I, I'll, I'll get in contact with you with the, the user later. It, 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 they may be outside the scope of just a quick, a quick, uh, a quick answer. Um, can you measure a thin film of a liquid? I haven't tried. Uh, I think it depends on how thin, but uh, and also uh, how much the surface is vibrating. Um, I depends on the liquid and I think it depends on the size of the, of the thickness of the film and the uh, 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 I mentioned probably the viscosity plays a big part um, usually water uh, water in a, in a small confined hole is gonna is gonna be vibrating like crazy but I would love to uh, follow up with you later on that uh, and and possibly do some measurements I think that would be very interesting to look at we we, we haven't we haven't researched that or we haven't actually uh, looked at liquid samples but there's no reason in principle why it wouldn't work uh, can we use this to measure the thickness of a colorless material like chitosan? Yes, certainly, um, as long as it's transparent enough to to let uh, uh, the reflection through. So if, if, if it's too uh, turbid, that's one thing I would worry about with like a biomaterial, is, is if the, the turbidity is quite high, you might get just a ton of scattering, and it may be difficult to see uh, uh, what, you're, what you're actually getting back there. But um, if you have a thin chitosan film, that's uh, uh, nice and clear, then I, it would certainly measure that without too much trouble. Um, let's see, is accuracy of 1% the same for both thin and thick, uh, thick and thin mode? Um, so I, I definitely don't want to promise 1% accuracy on all these measurements because, uh, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of contributing factors depending on your samples and depending on your uh, the actual measurement mode you're using. So the, the I, I would I would imagine the, uh, the the thick film mode is limited probably by your your measurement of uh, the group refractive index. So that's it's basically just two VSI modes, sorry, two VSI measurements done one after the other, and then you're you're dividing through by the refractive index to get the actual uh, uh, thickness of that film. So I I believe that your chances are your your knowledge of the refractive index unless it's a really well known material. Uh, are a really well characterized material are, is going to be a little less accurate than, than whatever the limiting factor for the VSI measurement is. Uh, just verify. So for the thin film, the standard refers to the substrate only, not the substrate with the same film with known thickness. Yeah, okay, so that is, that is true. So for the thin film, the, for, for building the model, uh, you need a, an uncoated substrate. Then for doing the calibration, uh, if you choose to do that, you need to calibrate uh, uh, the same substrate with uh, a, a film of known thickness. So those are two different things. You can get away with, without using a calibration standard, at least to, to try the measurements. But you do need uh, a, an uncoated substrate to, to build a model on. So uh, yes, I can verify for thin film the, the, the model is built on the uncoated substrate. So a question about multi-layered thin films. Um, for example, when they're more than two to three thin layers, uh, that's going to be really difficult for us because uh, 
especially when you start to get to something that's basically going to look like a Bragg grading, uh, we don't have the ability uh, to really pick apart those multiple interfering reflections. So uh, for us, we're limited to uh, two reflections at a time. So so one one thick one thick film or uh, the uh, what is it? The two two layers, like maybe a freestanding transparent layer. Sorry, freestanding transparent film. So no, unfortunately, we can't measure multi-layer uh, uh, thin films on this. So does this package have compatibility with some older systems? Uh, there is there is a legacy uh, thick film for Vision 32 um, that doesn't have the thin film capability. So this is this is definitely something we can discuss. Um, so follow you, follow with you uh, on that on that uh, offline. So um, one or two more questions here that I'm going to answer. I hope this hasn't been too uh, disjointed, but I'm just trying to get through all the questions that uh, that I can that are that are simple answers. So one more question about an unknown refractive index. So if you have a thin film and you don't know the refractive index. Uh, how do you get it? So you don't necessarily need to use another um, instrument. If you have part of the sample that is partially coated, so say you had a small square of the material, the transparent material, that's thick enough to do a thick film, you can measure it and you can leave the refractive index to one. And then you want to make sure that uh, the, so when you, when you do that and you leave the refractive index as one, which is definitely not right, you'll see the bottom surface of that measurement won't match the, the substrate. And then you can iteratively adjust the refractive index to get it, uh, to get those bottom surfaces to match. Uh, if what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, please feel free to, to contact me offline. Uh, how do you guess the refractive index? Um, refractive index for an organic material um, is probably going to be somewhere, I, I would probably start by just guessing uh, the refractive index of um, acrylic or, or some other similar material. Uh, refractive index isn't a huge, huge range. It's it's only one to two and change uh, in general. So it's it's not uh, something that that has a tremendous variability. But how sensitive is the measurement to the refractive index? It's directly proportional to the to the refractive index that you're doing for the thick films measurements. Um, if you're doing thin films measurements, uh, it will be extremely difficult to do that thin films measurement unless you know the optical properties already. So you'll have, to, you'll have to get that from somewhere. But you could start with a similar material if you have an unknown, unknown film. Um, can you measure liquid films? Uh, I think I've, I've discussed that a little bit. Uh, the short answer is we don't really know. Um, the longer answer is probably. But uh, we, it, depending on, on some of the properties of the liquid and some of the properties of the, uh, uh, the actual, how you're actually containing the liquid, so uh, if you're interested, please follow up with me on, on that offline. Um, and again, multiple layers. We're limited to two reflections here. And then finally, uh, last question that I have here is, I was looking to measure thickness of silicon oil film on a textured surface. Um, of all of the questions about liquids, I think silicone oil is probably the most likely to, to work because it is extremely viscous, which I think would cut down on vibration quite a bit. And I believe that that probably uh, has a reasonable chance of working pretty well, especially because it's it's fairly thick. Um, but again, if the thickness is is thicker than 100 microns or or so, then the bottom uh, of the surface will be uh, the bottom surface will be extremely difficult to see, because you basically won't get interference fringes on that bottom surface anymore, uh, unless you're at a, at a very very low magnification. So those are all the questions that I've gotten uh, that I can respond to uh, quickly. Um, there are quite a few questions that are longer uh, that I am happy to discuss at length with you uh, offline. But for the moment, um, I hope that was helpful. And if anyone is still uh, still has questions, please feel free to uh, to uh, send me an email or uh, get in touch. And otherwise, um, like I mentioned before, if you have questions about general surface properties or general surface uh, uh, metrology, we have quite a few pre-recorded webinars for you to look at um, that you can check the backlog of. And uh, quite a few, um, let's see, resources are available on Don Cohen's website, which I will uh, which I'll link to in the, uh, the notes for this. And as well, um, if you should want to see the presentation, um, we'll upload it in PDF form. 
and as well, uh, I think this will be recorded and posted um, fairly soon. So that's that's all that I've got for now. Um, if you already have a profiler and you're interested in, in uh, upgrading this, upgrading to a, to the films package, feel free to uh, get in touch with us, and um, we can we can uh, work out the details for how to make that happen. And if you already have the films package, which it seems like a lot of people here do, and you have further questions about about uh, why something is working or isn't working, then um, get in touch with uh, profiler support. So I, I think that'll be all for now. Um, thank you very much, and. Uh, uh, have a good rest of the week.